It's uh, it's currently 14 degrees. Damn it! I mean, 50 degrees here in Cory, 52 in in Badger, and generally middle, uh, mild throughout the area. Sorry, I really suck at this. Uh, we're gonna have a high pressure system coming in tonight, and that's gonna uh, uh, it's gonna uh, increase the pressure so that uh, we're not gonna have any rain for the next uh, three four days, and and the temperature should continue to David? be. You know, uh, David, um, hmm. 45 what? degrees are, are overnight. Are you even listening and, and, to this? Uh, and then during the day. Are you? you? Yeah, of course. I'm right here. What? <sighs> Nothing. You hear what I'm talking about, right? The ums and, and ohs, the disorganization, profanity. It's all got to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> profanity. It's It's just funny. Okay, next thing, music. Stick to the playlist, please. The playlist is boring. We are trying to reach a particular demographic here, adult contemporary. We program for them, not just whatever we want. It's still boring. Oh, and some of your choices aren't? You played three tracks from the Sounds of the Circus CD last Saturday. Hey, it was in the library. It was in the Sound Effects Library. You're not supposed to play calliope music on the air. What's the matter, Larry? Don't you like the circus? I, I was going for a thing, right? I'll be the ringmaster. Come enjoy the show. Well, look, it doesn't work, so don't do it anymore. Okay, okay. I think we better slow down your training a bit. I'm going to be coming in this Saturday and sitting in with you again. What? what? Why? Look, I, I just think we need to start back at the basics. Look... <laughs> It's friggin' 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. No one is listening. Maybe. Maybe not. We have to assume they are. Does Bob know you're coming in? I'm the program director. I can... D does he? Your Uncle Bob does not know I'm doing this. No. I gotta go. Sit in that chair. There, there's something I've, I've gotta do. You, you just have to... Pull... Sit in that chair right now. I just Sit. have to... Now reach over and close that door. Now you listen to me. Uncle Bob might not care how this station sounds, but I do. You know why? No. Because it's my job to care. Bob's father hired me 15 years ago. We built this station up from nothing, and we did it by caring about the little things, like how strong the signal is and how the DJ sound, whether or not the news is accurate. In short, everything that Uncle Bob does not care about. I'll make sure he knows you said that. He knows what I think of him. But what I want you to understand is that Uncle Bob, in his infinite wisdom, gave you a job working under me. And as long as that situation continues, you will at least try to sound like you belong on the radio. I am trying. Then you need to try harder. There's just a lot of pressure from the outside. What's that supposed to mean? I have way more important things to do. You want to fire me? Go ahead. It'll be doing me a favor. I can't fire you. You're the boss's nephew. But I can do other things. I can make your life very difficult. <laughs> what? You, you're trying to scare me, aren't you? I mean, you think you, I can't be fired, so you'll just scare me into behaving, right? That's funny. You think you're what, the, the, the scariest thing in my life, Big Bad Lawrence? Look, I never said that. Mr. Boss Man Lawrence, I don't know much about radio, but I do know a thing or two about motivation. Motivation? Yes, motivation. It comes from knowing your nuts are in another man's vice and there's nothing you can do about it. You don't have what is required to motivate me, Larry. Maybe you did under previous management, but not under Bob. All you can do is bluster and blow and threaten and hope I get scared enough to do as you say, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know why? No. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Larry, reach the tire, guys. I'll find one. <laughs>
Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. I, I have to take this call, David. Wait a minute. Sorry, man. I can't. Just wait a second. Sorry, Larry Guy. I got people to see and grain to mill, booze to drink, and cats to kill. <laughs> uh, uh, hello? Uh, yeah, hi. About this region entire time. Boss, you all right? Yeah, yeah. You, you scared me. What are you doing here on Saturday morning? Oh, I forgot my book yesterday. What are you doing here? You look like a cop on a stakeout. Um... Look, okay, uh, it, it's cold out. Get in the car. Oh, I only live two blocks, and it's not that... I know, I know, but can I talk to you for a second, though? Sure. Look, I'm here because of David. Okay. Well, what do you think of him, exactly? I don't think I know what you mean. Well, does he, like, strike you as, I don't know, strange at all? Maybe, uh, maybe dangerous? No. I mean, he's a little odd, but... Has, has he ever threatened you? I can't think of a time, no. Well, he threatened me yesterday. I, I told him I was going to come in during his shift. He, he didn't like that. I know he's a real loner. What do you mean, real loner? Well, this is just something Barbara told me. Something that dates back before Bob was in charge. Okay. Mr. Myers came back from a holiday break one time. Thanksgiving, I think. And he said something about this little kid and his family, David and how they were needing to get him special schools and how he was antisocial, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess he'd stabbed another kid at school with a pencil, deep. David was only about six then. Does, does it bother you having to work with him? I figure they got him some help and he's probably on meds or something. And all that happened a long time ago. But does it bother you? I... I don't deal with him much. He's just the weekend guy. I guess I make sure I don't deal with him much. What on earth is he playing? I don't know. He hasn't opened the mic in an hour. Are you going to go in and talk to him? Wendy, I'll see you Monday, okay? Larry? Yeah. Be careful. That's over. Hey, cats and kittens, it's the very early show starring yours truly. What? Where the? we play all the hits all the time. Here's a special one going out for my good friend, Lawrence. Larry, baby, don't go changing, all right? Is he drunk? What the? Where is he getting this music? My own private collection, Larry, baby. What? What? what is it? Yeah. This is just the easy listening stuff. I got some stuff I would never dream of playing on an adult contemporary station. Uh, I've got to get in there. <laughs> Why, Larry? I can talk to you just fine here. You. 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 you can't. Okay, let's slow down. Big Larry's having some trouble stretching for this one. All right, I have to get in there. <laughs> While you're not getting in. Hear me? 
Stephen, can you hear me? <laughs> how are you doing this? You know how it goes, Larry. <laughs> Nuts and advice. Nuts and advice. Is this going out over the air right now? Oh, Larry. Larry. <laughs> David, answer me. Can the whole audience hear us right now? The audience? They've all gone to the circus, Lawrence. He told me they all went to the circus a long time ago. Have you ever been in the circus? I don't understand. Sure you do. Elephants, trapeze artists, clowns. A lot of people are afraid of clowns. I used to be really afraid of clowns. <laughs> David? David, is someone in the studio with you? Keep singing, Davy. Keep singing. All the world loves to smile. Oh my God. Oh, Davy, Davy, don't cry, don't cry. You know what we do to eyes that cry, don't you? circus. Do you, Lawrence? <coughs> okay, then. What's wrong? What happened? Uh, what's, uh, what's going on? I don't know. I was on my way down to get the Sunday paper when I saw you here. You were just lying on the steps of the station. Is it morning? Yeah. It's 8.30. Oh, man. I've been lying on these steps for 16 hours. Oh! What happened? Well, it sounded like David was in trouble, so... I tried to help him. What? I thought the station was on fire. What? Well, David, he was in trouble when I tried to touch the doorknob. It was it was so hot it burned me. It's okay now. How did you know David was in trouble? He said so. Uh, on the air. You know, he got weird and started doing voices or something. Leon, I didn't hear that. Did you listen? All day. Pete and I were painting a room. We had the radio on. David! David, are you here? David! Uh, I'll check the office. Okay, I'll check the studio. David? Are you in here? Ah! Wendy! 
Wendy! David? Did you see him? Oh. I, uh... My God, I... I, I think it is him. On the, on the walls. All that's left of him is... It's painted everywhere. You mean... That's his blood? It's not just his blood. Are we gonna get that? You've reached Hits 91. There's no one available to take your call right now, so please leave your message. You know when. I just wanted to say thank you so much um, for the new man on Saturday. That, that, was, that was quite a show he put on. I haven't heard Thank so you much very much for the format change, at least on Saturday morning. We don't have a Christian radio station in town. Hey, so I thought the metal show you got going on Saturday morning, it absolutely rocks. I cannot believe where you find some fans. Just amazing. But I'm like searching for some of the fans. And I Family Radio, star Jean G. as Lawrence, Jeffrey Adams as David, and Beth Nelson as Wendy. Original music by Hollis Higgins. Written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. <laughs>